I want to preach this morning from this subject, the culture of victory. Or the culture of winning. Somebody shout victory. victory. Praise God. Father, bless us now as we preach to these your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message will require your honest cooperation. If you don't work with me today, uh, today this message will not work for you as God would have it. It requires your honest cooperation. It will require our minds and our memories. You got to, you got to participate today. Put on your thinking cap. Mind and memory. For we must be able today to look back and see where the Lord has brought us from. More specifically, to remember our last victory. Not our last hurts. Not our last disappointments. Not our last failures. But our last victory. The last time it worked out the way you wanted it to. Can I get a witness? Now, now Paul clearly uh, has taught us, and the Bible shows us that we can control our thinking. See, I don't let anybody control my mind and what I think about and what preoccupies my mind all day but me. Amen. I, I, want, I, want, I want to teach you to have control of your thoughts. Don't let your mind wander. Because when your mind wanders, uh, when it aimlessly wanders, and when it wanders without anybody controlling the wheel, it wanders to something negative. It goes to a, uh, uh, to a place or a time when something didn't work out. Amen. It won't, it won't find something marvelous for you to think about. It'll find something negative. You have to control your thoughts. Are you with me? Even when people are suffering with dementia and the, and the ravishes of aging, one of the things that goes is that faculty of the brain that keeps a person from saying things that they know they ought not say. From uttering words that they normally, with a healthy mind, would never utter. That's because primarily, the Bible teaches, that we are primarily, after the fall, evil. We have to learn to do good. Left to ourselves, we don't do good. Left to ourselves, we do the wrong thing. We think the wrong things. Fifty good things can happen. One bad thing happens. And the one bad outweighs the fifty good. You can meet fifty white people, you black folk in here, or fifty black people, you white folk in here, can meet fifty blacks or whites who speak to you and greet you properly. And what stands out in your mind is that one black person or that one white person who didn't speak. And you will say to yourself, I hate white people. Or I hate black people. You will overlook all of the whites who were wonderful. All of the blacks who were kind. And think about that one negative event. Paul speaks to our ability to control our thinking. 
Matter of fact, Paul says in Philippians 4 and verse 8, not only our ability, but our responsibility. He said, finally, uh, brethren, whatsoever things are true, that is real, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, reading from the King James, if there be any praise, think on these things. You think that you is understood. You think on these things. I don't want to meet, meet with you and you tell me about everybody who, uh, uh, who, who, who backslid, messed up, left the church, said something negative. You know, some people, you almost hate to see them coming because it's always bad news. They, they look for who or what's out. They search for who or what's out of place or who's missing or something. They, their, their world is what's wrong. Oh, my God. That's a terrible, miserable existence. The Bible teaches that if there's anything left, and notice, notice, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. If there's anything lovely, anything good, anything, he says, think on these things. For I want to give you a moment now. Now let your mind run back to your last victory. Oh, my. Last time something good happened for you. I know for some that's hard to do. You're sitting there going, hmm. But for the rest of us, let your mind, let your mind go back. Why is this so important today? It, this is so important because uh, uh, our successes, because one success encourages another. Amen. One victory. Thinking on one victory encourages another victory. Oh, my. You, you got to know how. To look back and see the Lord's hand in your life. And, and be able to say to God, Lord, if you did it before, God, you can do it again. Or am I saying these things as a man or does the Bible say the same thing? The Bible says the same thing. We see this with David who, who said this to a demoralized. King Saul. And, and Saul was demoralized because Saul forgot his past victories. Because Saul had a, a career filled with great victories. If you read, um, I would read it to you if I had the time, but if you read 1 Samuel chapter 11, oh, you will see where Saul, he put some type of whooping on uh, Nahash, king of, of the Amorites, who had, who had frightened uh, the men, who had told the, the Bible teachers, you know, I really, I, I, I don't have time to preach it, but he went to Jabesh Gilead and told the Gileadites, says, now I, I'm coming and I'm going to get you, and the only way you can escape from me is to make a covenant to give me your eyes. Give me your eyes and I'll let you live. Oh, he was a bad man, Nahash. Oh, he's, he's bad. But he made one mistake. They said, well, we'll do it, but will you give us seven days to think it over? Seven days. They, they gave him, seven, he gave them seven days. Well, in that seven-day time period, somebody told Saul. Saul said, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. Tell him, we, we, we're going to handle this. And Saul defeated him. If you study chapter 14, you will see a string of victories with King Saul and his ministry. Chapter uh, 14, verse 47 uh, through um, 48, it says, So Saul took, took the kingdom, and so Saul took the kingdom over Israel. And fought against his enemies on every side. Against Moab, against the children of Ammon, against Edom, 
against the kings of Zobah, against the Philistines, against uh, and whithersoever he turned himself, he vexed them, and he gathered a host and smote the Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of them that spoiled them. I mean, this man had a winning record, but by chapter 17, after have been, having been rejected by God, we find this man demoralized unwilling to fight Goliath, had totally forgotten his past victories. And we find the scriptures where David said unto him, young David who remembered his victories, says, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. David remembered his past victories. And he said, God who let me beat the bear and let me defeat the lion will give me strength to defeat this Philistine. See, the art of war is not as important as the art of faith. Spiritual victory comes to those who prepare for battle. The key here is faith in God's ability to do it again. Victory is more a matter today, saints, of attitude than it is aptitude. You may not be able to think your way through it. What you're dealing with right now may be beyond your ability to reason, but if you can just believe God, Lord, I can't handle it, but you can. Lord, I'm not up to the task, but you are. Nothing is beyond your reach. If you can believe God, then the Lord will see you through. See, God gives, God gives the disadvantaged victories. Solomon said this, he said in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, he says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, nor favor to the men of skill, but time and chance happens to all. Sometimes, you know, sometimes your, your, your victory is not a matter of you being in a advantage, in a, a place of advantage, but it's in your being willing to believe God. Right, right. Chuck Colson said this. He says, size is not the measure of success. Faithfulness is the measure of success. Biblical fidelity is the measure of success. We must know uh, what true success and true victory looks like. It is getting the job done while being faithful to the Lord at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? The Apostle Paul said in Romans 15, 18 through 19, he says, For I will not dare speak, I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ have not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. He says, if God have not wrought it through me, if it's not according to the Lord's will, I won't employ that to get you to do right. I want to tell those who try to build their churches on selling hot dogs and giving out candy and, 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 and advertising games. This is not the way to get people to do right. You got to get people to do right by telling them about the cross, by letting them know that Jesus Christ is real. Because sooner or later, you're going to get tired of hot dog sales and, and concerts and, and, and toy things that attract people. Paul warns souls through hard work and through preaching the gospel. He says, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and all around about Iclarium, uh, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. He said he wouldn't employ tricks to get people to do right. He wouldn't use lies, fables, nor half-truths to get people to obey God or to walk in victory. And today, I won't. All I want to employ is your mind. I want you to think back on the last time the Lord brought you out. Amen. 
uh, I want you to think to yourself of the times when you were going down and didn't think you were going to make it, and the Lord stepped in. Amen. The Lord gave Paul victory. The Lord authenticated him. Amen. And uh, Paul even said this concerning uh, doing right and preaching right and getting people to be a winner by doing the right thing. He says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, Paul says, we faint not. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. He says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, uh, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He says, we did not walk in trickery. And we did not handle the word of God deceitfully. Handling the word of God deceitfully is mixing other doctrines in your preaching. Mixing other disciplines in your gospel. Paul says, no, we stayed pure. And, uh, and we, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience. Paul had the mind of a winner. Paul had the mentality of a winner. Paul considered past victories. Bible says, uh, Paul said this, he says, but thou hast fully known, talking to Timothy in chapter 3, 2 Timothy 3, uh, 10 and 11, he says to Timothy, thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. He says, persecutions and afflictions which came upon me at Antioch, at, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. I wonder do anybody here have a but out of them all? Now I know all of us, I know all of us have a story. All of us have gone through some things. But, but can you say sitting here today that from back then up until now, but out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Good God Almighty. Yes, sir. Most of us can testify that we've been through the storm and the rain. But that's the point. We've been through it. Don't, don't, don't park in it. Don't let the devil cause you to rest there. Because the truth is, the Lord has brought you out. And even if you're in the midst of something now, think back to, to when you were in the midst of the last thing. Didn't the Lord bring you out? As surely as you came out, he brought you out. So Paul, with a winner's mentality, said this, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. Devil, you can't stop what God has started in me. Don't you let the devil put doubt in there. Don't you let the devil put maybes in your mind. You have to be confident that what God started, the good work that Christ started in you, that Christ will perform it until he comes that we are works in progress constantly improving sometimes three steps forward and two steps back sometimes two steps forward and three steps back but we get back on the right road and we keep going if we fall seven times we rise on the eighth time but we will not give up because we have a culture that's what I want. I don't want one or two saints believing that we win. I don't want one or two saints believing that we can walk in victory. But I want everybody from every sector of the church saying we can overcome. My God, that God is able. You want to be able to reach over and grab any brother or any sister in the church. And tell them I'm going through. Pray for me. And you hear from them a optimistic, yes, God can. And yes, God will. And yes, we will pray together. 
culture of victory. That's not arrogant. That is, that, is, that is the mind you have to have to be able to win the battles. Somebody then got diagnosed with something. Well, I'm here today. I want to preach winning to you. I want to preach victory to you. I want to preach, praise the Lord, that we serve a God who gives us the ability to triumph. Paul, with a, men, a winner's mentality, said, said, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengtheneth me. And then I heard him, I heard him when he talked about the God of the Bible. He said, now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And maketh manifest the savor, oh my, of his knowledge by us in every place. This is such a, po a powerful passage See, the triumph here, the triumph, the triumph is not just winning, but the triumph is a parade. Amen. Amen. Uh, the triumph here is like that of a Romans, of the Romans in which a public and solemn honor was conferred upon a victorious general by allowing him a magnificent procession through the city of Rome, a big parade. You see the general riding through. This was not granted by the Senate unless he had gained a very real signal and decisive victory. Yes, conquering, by conquering a province, he had to expand the Roman Empire. On such occasion, the general was clad in purple. Purple and gold woven in figures setting forth his achievements. What he did, the victory written all on his clothing. He wore a crown, good God Almighty. And uh, in one hand, that was a laurel. And in the other, which, uh, which was the emblem of victory. And in the other, he carried a staff. And he rode a magnificent chariot, adorned with ivory and plates of gold, drawn by a white horse to keep him humble. In the midst of all of this, a slave rode at his back, casting railings and reproaches and enumerations, uh, enumerating his vices and failures. See, when God gives us victories, he also gives us enough to keep us firmly walking on the ground. That's why you don't win all the time. You got to go through a few setbacks to keep you humble. So now he's riding through, and then there's that slave uh, uh, riding behind him. The musicians led out with the procession. Young men led sacrifices, led sacrifices to be offered. Then came loads of spoil, followed by the kings, princes, and generals uh, that he had taken captive. After these came the triumphal chariots before which people strode flowers and shouted triumphant cries. Following this came the Senate, the priests, and the rest of the parade. Everybody celebrating this general for a victory. And then when the scripture speaks of the, uh, the aroma, praise the Lord, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and, and verse 14 and down, he says, uh, uh, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. And, and in Christ, and I want to show you this here, and it says it calls us a triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. Now, this is metaphorically speaking, and you're going to see it in just a minute, in every place, for we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ and to them that are saved and to them that perish. Now, what's, what's happening? When the general had his parade, had his triumph. The people would also walk by diffusing incense. And if you were on the victory side, the incense smelled like victory. But if you were on the, de on the defeat side, the incense smelled like death. And see, God has given us a victory side. And uh, the praise that we send forth as the Lord gives us victory. 
It's a sweet smell in the nostrils of God. But not only that, but it is a blessing to others who are watching, who are standing on the sidelines as we celebrate your triumph, watching your celebration when you dance and when you praise God and when you give him victory for what he's brought you out of, that person on the standing over there going through says, well, if this person can shout, if they can have a, a triumph, if they can give God uh, the, the, the praise due to his name, well, ain't no need of me standing around dead. Maybe I'll start picking them up and putting them down and picking them up and putting them down and picking them up and, and the next thing you know they're dancing also and they're celebrating your triumph because they're smelling the sweet aroma of victory somebody send up a victory praise right now and notice this Paul said that God always causes us to triumph well, I hadn't had my triumph yet. Uh, Brother Johnson, hang in there. You'll get it. Just don't get bitter. Don't quit. Don't fall out. Don't give up on God. Just keep on living holy. Stay in place. Stay in the race. And he will bring you out. Won't he do it? Let me preach the text and I'm getting ready to go home. But uh, now Moses is giving a recount of the history of Israel. He's already talked about how God sent spies and explained all that to spy out the land of Canaan. Chapter 2 of our text, uh, chapter 2 is very important because it tells us things about God. I wish I had time to read the whole chapter to you. But it shows that we have to fight battles that the Lord tells us to fight and never fight battles that God tells us not to fight. Chapter 2, it says, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto me and said, We can pass, we can pass Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have come past this mountain long enough now go northward look at your neighbor and say you've been where you are doing the same old dance with this situation long enough now it's time to go northward oh lord today is moving day for somebody because god's sending victory thank you jesus pack your bags Get ready to go higher, higher in the Lord. Uh, time to go northward. And he commanded, he and, and commanded that thou, that the people, so he commanded thou, the, and command thou the people, saying, you are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelled in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. And, and look at this. And you and uh, take ye good. Take ye good heed unto yourselves therefore. But notice this. Meddle not with them. For I have not given you into their hands. He said now they're going to be afraid of you. But don't fight with them. Walk through the land. Buy what you need. But don't fight. Because I haven't given them into your hands. And he tells me, verse 7, And the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all thy works, uh, all the works of thy hand. And he knoweth thy walkings through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee, and thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed, uh, by our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt at Seir, uh, through the way of the valley of Eloth, uh, and from Ism Gerber, we turned and passed by the way, uh, look at this, of the wilderness of Moab. 
And when we got to the Moabites, and the Lord said unto me, distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them, for I have not given them into your hands. So don't bother them either, because they are fighters for real. They destroyed the, the Amims, and they were giants. They were called uh, Anakims. So I haven't given you victory with them, so don't bother them. Are you following me? And also you see in verse 19, look at me trying to preach and read the Bible at the same time. It's something to be jubilistic and didactic. It says in verse 19, And when thou comest against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them, for I have not given them into your hand. So, so in serving God, you got to listen to the Lord. See, some of us were not praying. We, we don't even ask God if we should buy the car. Don't ask God if we should buy the house. Don't ask God if we should marry this person. We don't ask God if we should do this, that, or the other. It pays to ask God. Because he may tell you, no, that's not, she's not the one. He's not the one. That's not the job. This is not the position. And sometimes they look like easy prey. Many of them, Israel looked at them and said, we can beat them. But God said, don't you fight them. Because anytime they fought someone that God told them not to fight, they got beat big time. They went up against little I under the ministry of Joshua and thought that they would defeat I. They defeated Jericho. Surely they could defeat I, but God had not given I into their hands. And when God haven't given a victory into your hands, you don't need to fight that victory. Can I get a witness? He said, just keep walking and don't fight yet. But then, 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 verse 24. Are you following me? He says, rise ye up. Take your journey. Pass over the river. Or none. Behold, I have given into thy hand Shehon the, uh, of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and his land, and uh, began to possess it and contend with him in battle. He said, Go on and fight him now, because I've already given you victory. I'm going to release you to fight this battle. Because the victory is already yours. Somebody shout today. Because the victory is already yours. And he says in verse 26. Thank you Jesus. And I sent messengers. Uh, of the wilderness. Uh, to Kedemoth. Uh, unto Shai Shehorn. King of Heshbon. With words of peace. Saying let me pass through thy land. And I will go along by the highway, and I will neither turn to the right nor to the left. And thou shalt sell me meat for money, and uh, uh, that I may eat, look at this, and give me water for money, that I may drink. Only just let us pass by on our own feet. Let us just walk through your land. And as the children of Esau, uh, that dwelt at Seir and the Moabites uh, at Ar and, and all the other folk that we went against until we have passed over Jordan. Just let us pass through. Uh, but Shehon uh, of Heshbon would not let us pass for the Lord had hardened his heart and made his heart obstinate. The, king, the Bible is written, the Old Testament is written in the causative tense. And everything that happens, uh, they write as though God caused it. And God knew that this king would be hard-hearted. And Israel said, just let us pass through. But the man wouldn't let him pass. And the Lord said to me, verse 31, Behold, I have begun to give Shehan into thine hands. I, I, you, you're going to win this. Began to possess the land that thou may inherit his land and they fought and God gave Israel victory that day they defeated that king somebody thank God for the victory has he given you victory have you ever won anything have you ever come out of any battle have you ever defeated the enemy have you ever come out smoking feeling like a champ saying see what the Lord have done to have any victory people in here the devil had you down for the count saying he's going to destroy you but the Lord brought you out anyhow 
and you know it was the Lord, the only explanation you have for it, that God did it. But then, 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 then chapter three came, and now you're up against Og, king of Bashan. Now here you are now, fighting something, another mountain, another battle. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this battle seemed to be one that you can't overcome. Have God ever just reminded you of what he brought you out of the last time? Upper room, we've been through many battles. We fought to keep Christ in Christmas. We fight, we fight, we fought for the definition of marriage. We fight for the unborn. We fight, hallelujah. We fought against Hollywood and told them they had the wrong Jesus. We fought against the LBGTQ community. We fought against this and we fought against that. And every time we fought, the odds were against us. The mountain was high. The devil tried to destroy us. Some people joined and some people quit. The devil threatened when we stood against a million man march. The devil told me all of the men are going to walk away. But we stood anyhow. When we stood on the definition of marriage, 25 preachers lined up against us, had a press conference, but we stood anyhow. Ah, Lord, cancer entered the service. Cancer grabbed hold of some members, but we stood anyhow. One victory led to the next victory, to the next victory, to the next victory. And here we are, still standing. Ah! Ah! Grab somebody by the hand and say, I'm still standing. I'm almost through preaching, but I want to hear the winners. Praise the Lord. I want to hear you. Those of you who are thinking back. Van, how often do you think back on that cancer when they found it in your body? Already in the fourth stage, a co-worker who was in the third stage, she died. And how many years has it been? 11 years. Look at God. Yeah! Yes! Ain't God a good God? Deacon Morgan, it's been almost 20 years. They found it in his blood, but didn't God heal you? Didn't the Lord make a way? And I saw him Saturday. He said, Pastor, I just came back from the doctor. They searched me, checked my colon, checked my prostate, checked my body, and I'm A-okay. Everything's all right. They told me not to come back. I want somebody to think about yesterday's victory. I want somebody to think about why the Lord brought you from. Oh, somebody, somebody. Mother Turner, you're still here. They found a mass in your chest. How many years has it been? 11 years ago. Look at her. She's still holding on. I feel my help coming here. I need a few people who can say, I've been through the storm and rain. Death hit my family. Trouble hit. 
problems hit, but I stood and the Lord brought me out. I held on and the Lord brought me out. Now I want all of the winners. I want all of the victors, every sector of the church. I don't want that to be anybody. I want it to be cultural. Let all of the winners praise the Lord. Let all of the winners encourage someone else. Woo! Woo! Praise him! Praise him! Praise him! Why are you praising him? Say Lord! Ah, Lord! You did it before! You can do it again! Yeah! Yeah! Ah, yeah! Is there anybody here facing a mountain? Oh, Lord, up before you. Something that you want God to fix. Something that you need the Lord to take, to take care of. If you're here, let me see you wave your hand. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I have some advice for you. And then I'm going to leave you. And here's my advice. Let your mind, I've been saying it all day, go back to the last time. And the same Jesus, the same Lord that healed my wife, touched my mother, healed my daughter, healed Keisha, delivered you and me the same jesus that same lord oh, 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 yeah, the same lord he's gonna do it again 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 if he did it before he can do it again yeah yeah Praise him on the past, praise him for the present, and praise him for the future. victory reminds them of the victory they go out take God at his word fight against Og verse 6 says and we utterly destroyed them we beat them fueled by a faith in what God did yesterday and what God did the last time fueled by that we contended Fueled by that, fueled by the Paul 
of the lion and the bear, fueled by yesterday's victories, we contend and they won. Today is a day of victory. Glory to God. Glory to God. But it's got to be fueled. Whew. See, because remember I told you, the art of war is not as important as the art of faith. Faith is an art and not a science. You got to find. You got to grab hold of something in your mind that causes you to believe God. It's an art to it. You, just like every person in here all of us have ways to motivate ourselves there are places that I can go in my mind oh that, that sets me on fire and causes the lion in me to come out it may not move you but it does something to me it's an art not a science but everybody in here ought to be able to reach up and grab something Well, what if I can't? I'll start with, you better grab, Lord, I believe, and help thou my unbelief. Well, Lord, what if I can't do this? Oh, ye of little faith. You're done. Now, see, the greatest sin is the sin of unbelief. You know what you can do with the sin of unbelief? Nothing. If no matter what God does, you say, I don't believe it, then there's nothing, you can't help that. Can't help that, see. You move on. But today, there are people in here who say, Lord, I believe. Lord, my, I'm, I'm thinking about what you did for my family. I'm thinking about what you did for my parents. I'm thinking about what you've done for me. I'm thinking about it. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, those, those, those cities, they were walled. They were impregnable. They were fenced. They had their own armies. They were unbeatable. But we beat them. But we beat them. They felt that they couldn't lose, but they lost. They felt that we couldn't win, but we won. When the Lord is on your side, God gives victory. Everybody today, those who are facing Og, King of Bashan, however that may be manifested, whether it is physical, financial, spiritual, whatever, however the enemy may be coming after you, if you have the ability to believe God based on yesterday's victory, past victories, if you have the ability to reach back into your yesterdays to build your faith brought Tasha out as far as they were concerned she's done but God but God If I'm talking to you, meet me at the altar. I want to pray with you. Meet me. I'm facing Og. Hey, 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 hey. I don't want you to make up anything. I won't feel bad if you don't come. Og. Og. Og is big. Og is strong, facing all. Hey, 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 hey. Ain't God a good God? Oh, Lord. Won't he make a way 
Won't he heal you? Oh, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, stir memories right now. Stir memories. Stir memories. Memories of yesterday. Stir memories of yesterday's victories. In the name of Jesus, past victories. Oh, Lord. Defeat is ever present. But God, you know how to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Oh, Lord. You're bigger than our enemy. Yes, you are. You have the power. Good God Almighty, we've seen you heal so many times. And we've experienced your delivering power so many times. So here we are today, calling on your name, remembering what you did on the last time. We're not like the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. Every new trial caused them to forget their past victory. They had to grow to where when the new trial came, it only reminded them of how you fought for them the last time. Here we are today facing some things, but the things we face today uh, to borrow what my pastor told me these are things that are just gonna get us God's attention the devil you you meant it for evil Satan you're trying to destroy us but today we declare that the only thing you're gonna get out of this is that you gained us God's attention and when the Lord looks at a thing God makes it right God delivers the Lord sets free in the name of Jesus. So Father, we come before you today declaring that we're energized to fight this present battle. Declaring that we're energized to deal with what is right before us. Because God, you've been there all the time. You've been there to give us power and you've given us victory. Well, Jesus, we come to you as one man. We come as one person. Every one of us believing. Nobody doubting. Every one of us having faith. Every one of us believing that if we speak to the mountain and say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, that the mountain will move. Oh God, we stand believing that you're going to do it for us. That you're going to do it for me. That you're going to do it for my neighbor. That you're going to do it for the person standing to my right, standing to my left standing behind me for everybody who believes you. Lord, you delivered every one of us in times past. Well, Lord, well, Jesus, we stand and we say, Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. Lord, heal again. Lord, deliver again. Lord, give us power over basin. Give us power over Og. Lord, give us victory. Lord, we claim the victory. We thank you for making us winners. We thank you for giving us power to be overcomers, giving us power to be more than conquerors, giving us power to defeat the devil. We claim it 
We claim it. We thank you for it. We give you victory. We give you praise. We thank you for victory. We believe it. We walk in it. We celebrate it. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The devil is defeated. Yes, Lord. God is exalted. Yes, Lord. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hey, yeah, hey, we win. We have the victory. Now thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, give him praise. Give him praise. Woo! Oh. I want to see who have the victory today. I want to see who has it. I want to see who believe it. I want to see who will say, preacher, you're preaching to me. And Og is defeated. Woo! Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This too, this too shall pass in the name of Jesus.